This is the fourth video of the 9 SwiftUI video tutorial series. Today we'll be learning how to draw programmatically in SwiftUI. In this tutorial series, we will slowly be building the Landmarks app. The app displays a list of landmarks with beautifully laid out photos. There is a profile view where the user can enter basic information, manage some settings, view their badges, and hike information. In the full list, you can toggle between showing only the favorite list or all of the landmark items. The landmark item in the home screen and list navigates to the landmark detail. Here, you can mark a landmark as your favorite. The favorite tag will persist even when you scroll back to the list. You will also be learning how to build a watch app using Swift UI. If you're new here, my name is Nas. I'm a full-time lead mobile software engineer and also a part-time freelance iOS developer. I make videos about iOS, talk about best practices, how-to tutorials, reviews, and programming in general. If you're an engineer, a beginner or experienced software engineer, you are in the right place. I want you to click the subscribe button because this channel is made for you. You don't want to miss out on any of the new videos I upload on this channel. Oh, and don't forget to enable the notifications from this channel by clicking the bell icon. Now let us talk about what we're building today. Users receive a badge whenever they visit a landmark in their list. Of course, for a user to receive a badge, we will need to create it first. This tutorial takes you through the process of creating a badge by combining paths and shapes, which then you overlay with another shape that represents the landmark location. We start by drawing the hexagonal background and later draw the overlay design on top as a second layer. If you want to follow along, download the starting project and the link is in the description below. In this video, I'll show you how to add lines and draw shapes with curves, when to use the geometry reader, how to layer different views using a C-stack, and how to apply a gradient color to the view. Let's start by creating the badge view. In the view, we will use SwiftUI's vector drawing APIs. We will create the badge view within the supporting views group. We start by selecting any file within the supporting views group, then right click. In the options, select new file. In the user interface section, select SwiftUI view. Then click next. Enter badge as the name and then click Create. We'll be using the graphics APIs in SwiftUI to draw a custom badge shape, which is going to be used later. First, we examine the code in the hexagon parameters that Swift file. The hexagon parameters structure defines some segments and values that will be used later in this tutorial will not be modifying this data. Instead, we'll use it to specify the control point for drawing the lines and curves of the badge. Control points are points in a 2D coordinate system such as the X and Y coordinates, which is used in drawing curves. I'm going to select the badge.swift file, then replace the text view with a path shape and then apply the fill modifier to turn the shape into a view. You use paths to combine lines, curves, and other drawing primitives to form a more complex shapes like the badge's hexagonal background. Next, add the width and height, then a starting point for the path using the move to method. The move to method moves the drawing cursor within the bounds of a shape as though an imaginary pen or pencil is hovering over the area waiting to start drawing. For many path operations, you must call this method. 
before any before issuing any commands that causes a line or curved segment to be drawn. Next, we will draw the lines for each point of the shape data to create a rough hexagonal shape. We will use the hexagon parameters point array and use the for each to add six segments. The add line method takes a single point and draws it. Successive calls to the add line begin a line at the previous point and continue to the new point. Do not worry if the hexagon looks a little unusual. That expected behavior right now. Over the next few steps, we will work toward making the hexagon shape appear more like the badge shape shown at the beginning of this section. We will use the add quad curve method to draw the Bezier curves for the badge's corners. The add quad curve method appends a quadratic Bezier curve from the current point to the endpoint, specified by the endpoint parameter. The relationships between the current point, control point, and endpoint are what defines the actual curve drawn on the screen. The exact curvature of the segment involves a complex mathematical relationship between the points. You can read about it online if you want to know more. Then we will wrap the badge path in a geometry reader so the badge can use the size of its containing view which defines the size instead of hard coding the value of 100. Using the smallest of the geometry's two dimensions, the height and the width, preserves the aspect ratio of the badge when its containing view is in square. Parent view suggests the size or frame of its child, and the child obediently follows the suggestion. There are instances you may want to size the child view differently from what the parent suggests. You use a geometry reader to access the parent's flexible size suggestion. Then you center the badge within its geometry with the X scale and X offset adjustment variables. The X offset is derived from the product of the difference between the X scale and 1. Then the result is divided by 2. The rest of the code here helps in scaling and centering the drawn image. We'll go ahead and replace the boring black background of the badge with a gradient to match the design. Then apply the aspect ratio modifier to the gradient fill. By preserving the 1 to 1 aspect ratio, the badge maintains its position at the center of the view, even if its ancestor or parent views are in square. The landmarks badge has a custom insignia in its center that's based on the mountain that appears in the landmark app icon. The mountain symbol consists of two shapes, one that represents a snow cap at the peak and the other that represents vegetation along the approach. We will draw them using two partially triangular shapes that are set apart by a small gap. We will now create a new file name badge background at Swift. Extract the body of the badge view into the badge background as a way to prepare the badge view for additional views. Then place the badge background in the body of badge to restore the badge. Then we create a new custom view called badge symbol for the mountain shape that is stamped in a rotated pattern in the badge design. First, we draw the top portion of the symbol using the path APIs we used earlier. 
Using the add lines method, we add 5 CG points to draw the snow cap. Now it's time to draw the bottom portion of the symbol. Since we are drawing a new shape, use the move to modifier to insert a gap between multiple shapes in the same path. Same with the peak shape, we will add 5 CG points. Then we will be adding a purple color property, then use it to fill the symbol. The badge design calls for the mountain shape to be rotated and repeated multiple times on top of the badge's background. We will be defining a new type for rotation and leverage the for each view to apply the same adjustments to multiple copies of the mountain shape. Now create a new rotated badge symbol view to encapsulate a rotated symbol. The symbol should appear layered on top of the background and a Z stack will help us to achieve the layered effect. In badge.swift, Lay the badge's symbol over the badge background by placing it in a Z stack. As it appears, the badge symbol is too large compared to the intended design and relative size of the background. We can correct the size of the badge symbol by reading the surrounding geometry and scaling the symbol. We do this by scaling it by a quarter and anchor to the top, then position it relative to the size of the parent view. We will need to create 8 copies of the badge symbols that will rotate in 360 degrees. As the last step in this tutorial, add a for each view to rotate and display copies of the badge symbol. A full 360 degrees rotation split into 8 segments create a sun-like pattern by repeating the mountain symbol. And add a scale to fit modifier in the end of the Z stack to fit its parent view. If you want to create multiple badges for different kinds of landmarks, try experimenting with the overlaid symbol. Varying the amount of repetition or changing the various angles and scales. And that's it for this video. I showed you how you can draw programmatically using paths and shapes using Swift UI. In this video, I showed you how to add lines and draw shapes with curves when to use a geometry reader, how to layer different views using Z-Stack, and how to apply a gradient color to the view. In the next video, you will be learning how to animate views and add transitions. I want to know what you think about Swift UI. Let me know in the comment below. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button below, and then click the bell icon to enable receiving updates from this channel.